<laughs> awesome. So I'm Caitlin Ruth and I'm a human potential coach and co-founder of Global Fast. Yeah, and, and I, am I am with Derosa Globe, <laughs> the co-founder number two of Global Fast, and this is our second episode of Optimal Self. We, we just talk away about hacks we use in our lives, how to optimize ourselves and be at our best performance, be better versions of ourselves. Woohoo! We can all do, right? Yeah, easy. Totally easy. <laughs> totally easy, yeah. Yeah, so um, I wanted to share with you, well, with everyone today, that I have been traveling, which is just like a mind, swear word. Um, <laughs> so during the, so you know, during Corona. Bye. <laughs> um, and yeah this um oh my gosh what have i done so my my hacks for travel because i've been traveling for internationally for a very long time and um i've managed to work out a few cool things that i do regularly that prevent uh jet lag yeah right so um one like one of them is that i cover up so i wear a cap and i wear long sleeves and i you know usually have my um tinted glasses on you know like true true dark glasses but yeah. i don't have true true dark okay. so um i just but have like generic okay yeah i have like blue blocking um junk light blocking glasses that are like from amazon or whatever but they're amazing, right? Yeah. Um, so usually I wear those with a cap and like all long sleeve, like cover, completely covered up. Um, but now with the mask on, it's kind of difficult to have the glasses because they fog up. So, <laughs> yeah. So anyways, don't do, I didn't do the glasses this time. Um, but basically what, why I do that is because of there's so much junk light in places like airports, right? And, and on airplanes. Um, and this is, it's draining. It's horrible. You know, it's like staring at your screen all day. Um, it's really, really bad for you basically. Um, and it messes with your, like your sleep patterns as well. Um, and it's not just your eyes that are received, like have light receptors in them. Your ears actually have some light receptors in them. So like wearing your earplugs, you know, during, during a flight or, you know, covering your ears like I can with my beanie here. Um, that's kind of like really simple things that you can do to like protect yourself from junk light. Right. Yeah, interesting. Um, and yeah and then the other like main thing for me is is timing so timing on a flight like how to time your flight so that you can like not um struggle with with jet lag yeah um does it, does it matter and, which direction you travel oh it totally matters but i i prefer uh, flying at night um because I get to sleep. So yes. I, I know a lot of people really struggle with sleep on a plane. Um, but I, you know, I take melatonin. Um, that's also an anti-inflammatory, which is great because you're, you're, you know, you're stressed and, and like, no matter if you're going on vacation or if you're going on uh, like a business trip or whatever, obviously not many people are going on vacation and I get that. And, you know whatever but there are people who are still traveling for business right now um yeah. and so you know um oh my gosh i just lost my words what am i saying what are we talking about you're talking about uh, traveling at night uh, that, uh, that's a preferred way of traveling so you book a, you, you book a night overnight flight preferably yeah right? usually i do that yeah okay. um and going uh so i'm in the us now going to the uk is, is easier for me um 
then actually no i'm lying it's usually more difficult but the last time i came over um it was it was extremely easy because i got in a solid night's sleep um yeah and you know i was able to to get straight on to the um schedule there yeah anyways so uh, you, came, you were traveling uh, east. No, west. You're traveling west. Yeah. You're traveling west. So yeah. uh, when you arrived to your destination, what was the time of the day? So it was the evening. It was in the evening. So okay. I there was like a requirement to like go you know stay up late enough and then go to sleep at um a, a normal local time yeah yeah so that was you know that was something um and yeah what so else when you when you landed um, did you stay up did you stay up till your usual bedtime time even though you were tired yeah yeah i pushed through and that is something that i would absolutely recommend is is pushing through that way you could you could have a nap you know um yeah. i don't know have you done that before where you've just pushed through a jet lag or a yeah. uh, sleepy moment yes. i i tend to, i tend to do that uh but also it depends what time zone you're in and what are the timings of uh, you know duration of the flight what time you left and what time you landed sometimes it's really really hard to do it because our body's just like oh no i really need to get some rest um but uh yeah good things good things are uh, as you said it's taking melatonin so melatonin so you have to um well, wherever, whichever, whichever direction you travel, you try to take melatonin on the flight, even if it's like a daytime flight, but you, tr you try to get your seven, eight hours sleep um, before you reach the destination. So you kind of... So that, that's a little bit of a, a variable because I've had a daytime flight now. Um, I was, you know, I didn't plan this trip very well and I didn't get a nighttime flight like I usually do. So that kind of, um, I had to adapt my usual, uh, sleeping routine, you know, to, to this flight. And I did, um, I did nap on this, the long flight coming over. Um, yeah, it is exhausting flying. <laughs> so like that's yeah. my excuse for having a nap but naps are not um a necessarily a bad thing i just didn't try and cram in like i didn't try and make up sleep that i had lost or oh, that yeah. i was gonna yeah. you know, try and make up for you know um yeah. just try to like stay super present and like what do i need right now like i was up at whatever it was 4 30 in the morning so yeah like i need a little bit of a nap, a nap. um yeah. And then I can, you know, carry on like I was, uh, you know, doing work on the on the plane and, and all that. And so I was able to then have a little nap and then go back to work and do my work. Yeah. And I had a second nap as well, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, you know, when I landed, it's get like stay up and get into yeah. the time zone that you're in. You know, another yeah. another mind trick for that is to change your clock. So yes. change the time on your phone when you get on yes. the plane before you even yes. go anywhere. So your yes. mind so is you already in the new time zone. In your destination time zone. Yeah. 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 And when, what Absolutely. about eating on the plane? What are your, what, what are your hacks on talking to this eating? <laughs> I love these. So, okay. So what I used to do is, is just make sure that I had a, gluten-free meal i don't eat gluten normally um unless it's christmas and my dad's baking ah! um yeah. but <laughs> so i i usually order a, you know i request a, a gluten-free meal um and make sure that i um fast before any meal time now the thing with flying and traveling is that it again it is a stressful time it can be a stressful time so um food is comfort right 
that's yeah, like yeah, yeah, it's not true. sometimes it, it's very you know it's like in our whatever it's how we were brought up right um our mothers feed us to make to soothe us yeah. right so um for me it's very difficult to fast an entire flight um yeah. a, a long haul flight i'm talking like long long haul so short flights whatever but like 10 hours plus it's very difficult yeah. for me to do it so i fast until um the meal time on the plane um and then i again like check in with myself like what do i need i try to stay present um and remove myself from that stress response you know um mm -hmm. and and really notice like okay do i need to eat right now or is it just because it smells good and because i'm stressed mm -hmm. the fuck out you know yeah um well, sorry. Oops. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, of course, at your destination, you know, you want to um, get on um, your local time eating schedule, right? Yeah. So I landed at like five or six in the evening and I had dinner. And I didn't eat, okay. you know, late into the night or anything like that. Like I had dinner and then that was it. Um, mm -hmm. And so this way we're also like getting into a uh, local time routine. Yeah. And how, what, how did you feel after the next morning, the next day when you woke up? Fa fasting again, next day, you know, fasting. And um, I, yeah, I only, I only ate like after 12 PM, I think it was, you know, I, I skipped breakfast. Um, and I think it was even later than that, to be honest. Um, but I went for a walk in the morning in the forest, uh, got some fresh oh, nice. air, like did some grounding, sun gazing. I was thinking of you, your sun gazing. Um, yes. and yeah. Yeah, grounding, so. yeah. I'm, glad that, I'm glad you mentioned grounding because that's really important to do, especially after a long haul flight. Uh, grounding mm. uh, comes with you know various benefits, but also it uh, what well, it literally grounds us to the ground after being up in the air for so long. But um, <laughs> it uh, balances our hormones, so <sighs> you are uh, you are more balanced. And back to where you need to be uh, in your time zone. So that is uh, that. That's the trick to it. And grounding is good in general uh, on daily basis. I started doing grounding again, even though it's cold and dark in the mornings. But I'm like, no, I need to ground myself because this is not good. Good for you. <laughs> yeah, and it, I, yeah. I, I, I don't know whether it's, um, you know, subconscious uh, kind of or not or there is there is a real science behind it and then and there is but i do feel 100 percent better uh, when i did grounding in the last two days only and mm -hmm. so yeah so you're back to normal back in uh back in the tennessee time zone i'm done, you're done. i'm back baby yeah <laughs> yeah i mean like it's, it's been, you know we need to do Sorry, I have. We a... need to be like <laughs> mindful. <laughs> That's all right. We like it's like a conscious thing, right? So you need to choose to actively hack your jet lag, right? Um, yes. You can't just sit there and be like, "Oh, well, uh, I'm jet lagged. I'm like not going to do anything about it," you know. So you choose, like, I choose to like not let jet lag be a part of my reality. Yeah. Right. So in a yeah. day, I'm good to go. You know, as soon, hopefully, like ideally, as soon as I land, I'm good to go. Um, yesterday yeah. morning, I did feel tired, you know. But what I did was I took action and I went into the forest and I grounded and I sun gazed. Thank goodness the sun was out because yeah. it was raining today. Um, okay. And, you know, and I meditated as well while, while I was in the forest. So it's like all these yeah. good, juicy, high vibration things that are like giving you energy. Right. Yeah. And, and, and they're all free. You don't have to pay for any of them. Ah! Yes. We yeah. love free stuff. Simple, <laughs> free, free, available to us. 
and Alice, Alice being impatient, obviously, because mommy's talking. No. <laughs> Ask daddy, daddy knows. Oh, he does. He took us to his bedroom. No. So amazing. So you're back, back to normal now. Yeah, yeah. And I want to know what um, hacks you've you've been doing. You, you said you've been grounding, so. So yeah, I've been grounding. Uh, that is my hack. Well, I'll, I'll talk about it in a different hack. But grounding, yeah, it's it's incredible how because I remember doing it in summer more often than because obviously it's more comfortable and convenient to do it in the summer. Uh, and I know that grounding is really good, uh, resetting our circadian rhythm and um, balancing our hormones. So when you ground in the morning and you sun gaze in the morning, uh, you th the whole circadian rhythm falls into the right place and then you sleep well. When you sleep well, you function better. So that's, you know, that's as simple as that. But we often don't, uh, we mess up the circadian rhythm. And you mentioned melatonin uh, taking on the flight and, uh, and the junk light. So when you fly, junk light, any light uh, suppresses melatonin production in our body. So if we don't produce melatonin, um, if we are constantly surrounded by junk light, even if it's a, a blue light a screen glaring in our, uh, from our bedside table, from our alarm clock, from those little sockets with sharp, yeah. bl uh, right, bright blue, piercing lights. And yeah. all of that combined, um, and even, you know, on, on its own, it triggers our brains into thinking that it's midday. So even when we sleep, we don't sleep as we should be. Uh, so grounding, you know, grounding um, is one of the, one of the hacks that balances your hormones and uh, sets your circadian rhythm in the right kind of pattern. Uh, and if you do it for 20, 20 minutes is, is um, minimum, I would say, but ideally 40 minutes per day. Uh, mm. So I do, I do grounding in the mornings when I do my, uh, when I do my, drink my bulletproof coffee and I just look at the sky and often listen to podcasts. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and it really, really sets me up for the day. Like when I don't do it, I totally, I really feel it. If I don't do it, yeah, my 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 ang my anger gauge is overheating. <laughs> when I don't do it. <laughs> well, it's amazing, right? It's how we like we spoke about you know approaching life from presence, right? So basic. I yeah. mean, you get presence, you get centered when you when you're grounding and you do you know sun gazing and all these things. And it sounds like a sort of a meditative practice for you as well. Yeah. Yes, I guess it is, right? Because, yeah, it really makes a big Loki. difference. Loki. Um, and just a quick, quickly, so I want to, I discovered um, my, my uh, hack of the week is, um, is this. These are activated. What is active that? Walnuts. Well, it's not good. So these are activated walnuts. Well, they fall out. And <laughs> You're giving me some, thank you. <laughs> so last year, before Christmas, my mom, my mom who lives in Poland, she's got this massive walnut tree in her garden, and it was the all the walnuts were dropping, uh, and she had loads and loads and loads. Stop shouting, please. Loads and loads, and she sent me like a big bag. I think like ten kilograms of walnuts. Um, and I've learned, you know, nuts are good for you. Nuts are a great source of uh, healthy fats, uh, loads of protein and minerals, but they are also very calorific and also can be difficult to digest when you eat them raw. Mm -hmm. So act activating nuts is stripping them from what is called phytic acid. They have this chemical in, in them. Uh, it's called phytic acid and it acts as an anti-nutrient. So when you eat too many of nuts, it often doesn't benefit, um, you know, doesn't do what, it, what they should be doing. So when, uh, so by activating, you, I mean, um, you need to soak the nuts for between 12 to 24 hours in water, just plain water. You can add some uh, uh, salts to help the cleaning process. process. 
then drain them, have them dry, and roast them or hyd rehydrate them. So roast them in the oven, but at like very low temperatures, so 65 degrees Celsius uh, for um, 12 to 24 hours, depending on type of nut. So almonds are like the hardest and they, have, they need the longest in soaking and roasting. Uh, walnuts, they, uh, they, I soaked them for 12 hours and I roasted them for 12 hours as well. And while I was roasting them, I drizzled them with some honey, uh, raw honey and, uh, and sea salt. So they are now like this amazing... Um, like candy. Pardon? It's almost like candy now. It's like candy, yeah. And they, uh, they taste amazing. And also what uh, the activation of it does, it reduces the amount of fiber. So they don't fill you up as normal raw nuts would. So you can literally eat loads of them and don't feel like bloated or full like you would normally feel after a handful of walnuts. And, they, um, and the, uh, the activating process increases amount of, nut of vitamins and minerals in it. So we get, um, you know, we, we strip them from the anti-nutrients and we get the best, um, the best thing what they can offer. So I made loads. I made two jars like that. So that will, that will keep me going. Um, Amazing. And, and uh, even Elliot likes them, my five-year-old. And we were talking about the walnuts <laughs> the other day. And he said, oh my God, they, I said to him, they're good for your brain. And, and I said, you see, they're good for your brain. They even look like brain. <laughs> And then he repeats that to everyone he's, he sees. He's like, do you know that walnut's good for your brain? Because it looks like brain. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so yeah, activate. Oh, that's cool. Activate. Wow. They'll be, uh, they'll be better for you than the raw nuts. Yeah, that's totally. So I just bought some organic raw nuts so, from the shop. So ideally, I would soak them. Yeah. And... Um, I'm just trying to think what they were. They were um, um, cashews, yeah. walnuts, and something else. Okay. So it was like a combo. Okay. So, yeah, soak them yeah. 12 hours in the water. Um, just let them stand there. Um, bicarb soda added to the water as well helps with cleaning because sometimes they can, nuts can be moldy. Um, yeah. So the activation helps with that as well um, because we don't know how and when and for how long they were stored in the manufacturer. So the activation it really, really kind of, uh, yeah, you make sure that they're toxic, toxin free um, and mm -hmm. they're just best for you. So yeah, soak them, pat them dry, put them in the oven for like 12 hours, um, 65 degrees, no more than 80 degrees Celsius. I don't know what's that in Fahrenheit. Um, but yeah, no more than 80. Uh, and it's like, it doesn't, you know, it's, you can put your hand in the oven for that temperature. It's, it's not hot. Right. Um, but, yeah. but they just, they basically kind of rehydrating slowly. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, amazing. Good... Thank you. I feel like yes. my nest life is going to be like way more, I mean, it's hacked now, right? Like, yeah. Cause I always like. I know uh, a lot, you know, Bulletproof, like, is all about, you know, eliminating potential avenues of getting mold in or around your body, yeah. right? And that's, you know, yeah. so, like, biohacking, right? And so I've yeah. always been super wary of um, nuts, where I buy them, if they're raw or yeah. not, like, how they taste sometimes. Like I remember yeah. getting a, a bag of um, pistachios and they tasted moldy, and I was I just I was like this is just you know I don't know if they were, they but like, yeah, they have that like rancid flavor, right? So, like really horrible. Yeah. yeah. So this is great. Now we can soak them, get rid of the anti nutrients, and then add whatever flavor we want as well. Like I love your honey yeah. and um, salt. Like that's amazing. I love honey that combo. Yeah, you can mix them. You can make them spicy with some chili and, uh, mm. you know, some maybe lemon, lemon zest and stuff like that. Um, but I kept it quite neutral because I want the kids to have them as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Brain food, right? Yes. <laughs>
by you know slow baby awesome. steps baby steps. <laughs> <laughs> cool so i think this sort of wraps up our um optimal self uh session for today yeah. um yeah and i hope everyone's enjoyed it uh we spoke about uh, jet lag, which is, of course for many people is not a thing right now, but preparing for it is a thing. So when we do, when everyone plans to travel again, we know what to do. Um, exactly. And optimizing nuts, because I mean, pretty much everyone eats nuts, right? And if you're not eating yes. nuts, you should be eating nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah. And yes. we're, we're okay. having a community global fast coming up beginning of February. Yep. What date are we doing that? The 7th? 7th of February. Uh, we'll send okay. out uh, reminders all over our social media. So you will have no excuse not to join. Uh, but yeah, prepare, it's all about preparing and um, doing it together. because. It's